I would like to call the chairpersons, Dr. Sandeep Roy, Dr. Rajkumar Krishnasamy, Dr. Nikhil Chilagi, Dr. Supriya Sharma, and Dr. Madhumita Mukhupadhyay. Can we all in the stage, please? Very good afternoon to all who are remaining from the previous session. But actually, this is probably more common a problem uh, if you just take the sheer numbers. So, to start off the session, may I call upon Dr. Kalyan Kar, who will speak on surgery for complex perianal fistula. Yeah, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. At, at the dead end of our session today, uh, I am been to ask to speak something on complex fistula surgery videos. As I am associated with laser surgery for the six years deeply, I have taken up two videos to show you how complex fistula surgery can be done or can make a disaster with laser. So both the things I want to show you today. This is a complex fistula uh, where there is an external opening high up near the greater trochanter. When we are giving the hydrogen peroxide, it is coming out through the internal opening which was very much near the pivorectal sling. So we decided to go, this is a 15 years old boy who came in the midst of the COVID pandemic in 2020, September from Patna with this situation. So the, with this long track, we decided to do, go for a laser uh, surgery and we initially closed the internal opening with a mucosal flap. After closing the internal opening with the mucosal flap, we took up the track with the help of the laser. You can well see how long is the track. If we have done a conventional surgery like fistulectomy or anything else, he would have been with a huge uh, gluteal surgical scar. So to avoid this for, for a 15 years old boy, we decided to go ahead with the laser ablation of the fistula track. We initially closed the internal opening with the help of a mucosal flap. Now, they, uh, this is the most important point of the ablation. Here you have to give the energy at a very specific limit. That is, you have to give the energy at between 12 to 14 watt and you should be withdrawing the fiber at 1 millimeter per second. If you become slow in withdrawing, you are going to damage the, uh, you are going to burn the tissue along with there will be damage to the muscle. But if you are faster, then you will not be able to ablate it. So your hand movement, hand control is most important thing when you ablate. You see this is in the midst of the COVID, so we are on PP that those days. So you have to be very careful when withdrawing the laser fiber because it's a wrong concept that laser causes burn. It's a complication of laser that, that is burn, which I shall show you in the next case. So we want a temperature to rise between 60 to 80 degrees centigrade so that coagulation of protein on the fistula wall takes place leading to the collapse of the fistula track along with internal closure of the Thing. So we, I did it at 14 watt, it took 2 minutes 13 seconds around, there was a small sebaceous cyst that was also excised, there is no surgical wound. So this case was done with the help of laser. Now I am showing you another case, this is a recurrent complex fistula. This patient has got operated by some other surgeon with the help of laser. But the patient landed up within 3 months with a recurrence. When I examined this patient, I found that in parorectal examination, there is a big gap just below the puborectal sling where there is necrosis of the internal opening area. The MRI before the first surgery showed that there is an internal opening, small internal opening at 6 o'clock. Now the new MRI is showing there is a big gap not only MRI, my clinical examination is showing that there is a big gap just below the puborectal sling where tip of my index finger is entering. 
So, this has happened because of the excess energy that has been delivered to this simple fistula. It was a simple transphenteric fistula, but because the excess laser energy was delivered that has caused necrosis of the wall, necrosis of the track leading from a simple fistula to a complex fistula. So, I decided that this is a case where there is a failure because of the excess energy I should take up with a conventional uh, fistulectomy because if because the internal sphincter muscle has been already damaged by the excess delivery of the laser energy. So, the first case I am showing that how complex fistula can be done with the help of laser and how a simple fistula if done improperly with the laser can be converted to a complex situation. So, laser fistula surgery seems very simple, seems very easy, but the pr proper technique and proper timing how much laser you have to be used um, uh, requires lot of learning and lot of other techniques also. So, in this case we did a fistulotomy, the whole track has been laid open, the accessory track there were basically two tracks has got formed, the other track was also laid bare. This is the second track that is formed because of the excess energy. Now, we took a biopsy from the part of the fistula track wall to rule out any other pathology like tuberculosis or Crohn's because this is a recurrent case. And So, the tissue biopsy of the fistulous wall was taken, all recurrent cases must have a tissue biopsy taken. Now comes the other part that deep down in the cavity where the granulation tissue is there, here we just have sprayed some laser beam with a bare tip fiber to ablate whatever left behind granulation tissue is there because this is adherent with the internal sphincter. If we have taken to take out this part of the wall, I could have damaged the internal sphincter. So, it is puberectal is ring also. So, it is much safer if we can spray some laser energy over the granulation tissue because the penetration of the laser energy is only 2 to 3 millimeter. So, there is no chance of uh, getting the muscle layers getting injured. So, meticulously all the granulation tissue that has been left behind has been ablated with the laser beam and after that we put some ice over it, put a just a small gauge piece and we can discharge the patient and this will I know that this will definitely this held up within short period of time. So, the first case was a complex high fistula which we tackled with the help of laser. Second case I am showing where a simple fistula which got complicated because excess laser energy was given by someone outside which has caused total destruction of the fistula track leading to abscess and recurrence of the fistula. That has to be tackled with the confrenal. This is the outer open site. This is the MRI report of the first when the patient got 
preoperatively before the first surgery. This is the second. Thank you. This is the MRI. If you look at the MRI, you will see that there is a cavity also in the intersphincteric plane. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Kalyan. Uh, the floor is open for discussion. Yeah. Is blue dye at all? To uh, the uh, definitely. Uh, if there is a multi branching track, I use methylene blue. Right. And the second case, you, know, you said the internal sphincter was already damaged. So the external sphincter was intact. So external sphincter was par partially damaged. Pivotectally, the internal opening that got damaged by the previous surgeon was just adherent to the pivotectal sling. Right. So I have not done the posterior dissection there. I just ablated that with the laser, uh, the granulation tissue. Because if I have uh, used any diathermia over there, that would have caused further damage to the pivotectal sling. Mm -hmm. So the sphincter was adequate. Sphincter was pivotal sling was preserved. Right. Any further question? So if no more questions, sir, what are the recurrence, are the causes of recurrence in the post laser? Uh, uh, post laser that depends upon which type of fistula it is. For the complex? Uh, okay. For the complex fistula it is around 10 percent recurrence. If it is a transphincteric fistula, internal opening within 2 to 3 centimeter of the anal verge, recurrence rate is to the extent of 5 percent. And for intersphincteric fistula, I always discourage to do with laser. Thank you. So, if no more questions, can we move on to the next? Uh, thank you. Th th thank you, sir.